Hey everyone, I'm hoping that you can all see us. We are using kind of a spin-off of Hopin um, called StreamYard and it's our first time doing this. So if there is any technical difficulties, please let us know in the chat at any time. Um, I am Janessa Peterson. I am the fundraising specialist at Let's Encrypt and ISRG. Um, ISRG is Internet Security Research Group which is the 501c3 nonprofit behind Let's Encrypt. Today we're talking about chains, certificate chains, and this wonderful expiration that we have coming up at the end of the month. And I'm here with Aaron Gable. I will let Aaron introduce himself and take it away. We will also be doing Q&A at the end. So if you have any questions during this event, feel free to put them in the comments, um, in the stream chat, and we will talk through some of those later today. We are gonna keep it more towards, geared towards chains and certificate, cha certificate chains, specifically at Let's Encrypt, and also the expiration at the end of the month. So if you have other questions about Let's Encrypt, we can definitely maybe do this again for other topics, but let's keep it more geared towards what we're talking about today. So Aaron, I'll let you take it away. Fantastic. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Aaron. Oh, my video is suddenly very large. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm Aaron. Uh, Currently tech lead of the Let's Encrypt development team uh, here at ISRG. I uh, got a wonderful crew of folks working with me, but today I'm just going to be talking about the upcoming expiration uh, partway through the day of September 30th of the DST root CAX3. Uh, what the heck does all of that mean? Uh, what does it mean for us? What does it mean for Let's Encrypt subscribers? What does it mean for clients who visit the websites of Let's Encrypt subscribers, etc.? cetera? So uh, without any further ado, let's kick it off. Um, I don't think this is gonna take particularly long, but uh, we've got a whole bunch of time for question and answer at the end. So let's get going. First things first, what the heck is DST root CAX3? Um, fundamentally, DST root CAX3 is a certificate, uh, just like any other certificate in the web PKI hierarchy. Um, things to know about it. Uh, first, it is a CA certificate. It has the CA true bit set, so it is capable of issuing other certificates. Huzzah. Second thing to know about it, it has the same issuer and subject. So that means that it's a self-signed certificate. A self-signed certificate says, hi, I trust myself. Uh, this means that effectively, it, this definition gets a little weird, but it is effectively a root certificate. Uh, there's a whole lot more that goes into the definition of a root, but this certificate for DST root CAX3 was issued by itself. There's no one else out there saying, I trust DST root CAX3. It's saying, I trust myself. And in particular, uh, there are a lot of root programs, the Mozilla root program, the Microsoft root program, uh, the Google Chrome root program, the Android root program, et cetera, who all also say, and I trust DST root CAX3. Therefore, it is a root in those root programs, and that makes it a highly trusted certificate. But, sort of, uh, spoiled things by making this bold early, but it expires September 30th, 2 p.m. UTC, approximately. So what happens when a root expires and what is everyone going to do about it? This diagram represents the state of things as of early 2020. So, uh, Looking at our legend in the lower right corner, all of these ovals actually represent private keys, not certificates. So remember there's a difference between the private key that a certificate is bound to because the certificate contains the corresponding public key 
and the certificate itself. And the web PKI, the hierarchy of all certificates participating, is actually best represented as private keys saying, I trust this other private key by issuing a certificate for that private key. So for example, this loop up here in the upper right is the private key DST root CAX3 saying, I trust myself by issuing a certificate for myself. And that's the certificate we were just looking at on the previous slide, the self-signed root. But uh, in the hierarchy for Let's Encrypt, uh, we also have a connection here where, where DST root CAX3 says, I trust this certificate called R3. And what is R3? R3 is one of Let's Encrypt's intermediates, and it's an intermediate because it is it does not have any self-signed uh, certificates. It does not appear in any root programs, but it is trusted by both our own root, ISR2 root X1, which of course trusts self, has this own self-signed root certificate, and it has, uh, it, it says I trust R3 as well. So R3 has two certificates that represent it one signed by ISRG root X1, and one signed by DST root CAX3. So as of 2020, Let's Encrypt was issuing certificates, and when you got your certificate, you could choose which chain you wanted. The default chain, which was your end entity certificate, is trusted by R3, which in turn is trusted by DST root CAX3. And that's this default chain over here. Or you could request the alternate chain. Uh, your certificate here is trusted by R3, which in turn is trusted by ISRG root X1. And the main criteria that you would use to select between whether you wanted the default chain or the alternate chain is, do your clients trust ISRG root X1? And the answer for a lot of people is yes. ISRG root X1 is in the Microsoft root store, it's in the Google root store, it's in the Mozilla root store. So uh, yes, it is widely trusted, but fundamentally ISRG root X1 uh, was first issued around 2015 and DST root CAX3 was first issued around 2000, I think. So it's had a lot more time to be widely trusted. So that was the default. But we knew that this expiration was coming up. Uh, the upcoming problem in 2020 was that uh, the certificate that DST root CAX3 issued for R3 was going to expire uh, on September 30th. So we needed to work around this. Not everyone has ISRG root X1 in their trust store yet but the chain up to DST root CAX3 is going to have an expired certificate in the middle of it. That's bad, so we solved this problem. So as of 2021, we were offering a new different set of chains. Uh, we got a new certificate issued here. Uh, this certificate right here in the middle, uh, you can see has issuer DST root CAX3, and subject ISRG root X1. So this certificate represents the same private key as the ISRG root X1 self-signed root, but the certificate itself is in fact an intermediate certificate issued by one root for a different private key. And so what this allowed us to do is still have two different chains one chaining up to ISRG root X1, the other chaining all the way up to DST root CAX3, uh, but without having to use this soon to be expired certificate in the middle. So uh, as of this year, the chains that we've been providing to uh, Let's Encrypt subscribers, uh, allowing subscribers to choose between, are the default chain, starts with your certificate, which is trusted by R3, which is trusted by ISRG root X1, which is trusted by DST root CAX3, which is in turn still in all of those various root programs. 
But if you wanted an alternate chain, you could start with your certificate, which is trusted by R3, which is trusted by ISRG root X1, which is in a bunch of root programs. So you could use that shorter chain if you weren't concerned about some clients who talk to your website not trusting ISRG root X1. So the criteria to choose between these two, uh, uh, these two chains was basically the same as before. Um, pardon me just one moment. This will continue momentarily after I unlock my screen again. All right, let's get started again. Uh, but as of midday through September 30th, uh, that DST root CAX3, uh, uh, oh, well, one, one thing here. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, got a little bit ahead of myself. Uh, midday through September 30th, uh, 2021, this DST root CAX3 self-signed root certificate is going to expire, just like this R3 intermediate expires. And so the question becomes, what do you do about that? Well, one of the things you do about that is this intermediate, this intermediate of for ISRG root X1 issued by DST root CAX3, it does expire September 30th, but September 30th, 2024, not 2021. So uh, even though that R3 intermediate is expiring, even though DST root CAX3 itself, its own self-signed certificate is expiring, this intermediate for ISRG root X1 is not expiring. And that's key. That's really going to uh, be important uh, in the next few slides. Um, but now that DST root CAX3, the root itself, is expiring, how do you choose which of these chains to request from Let's Encrypt and which of these chains to serve to or to use when you do a handshake with clients coming to your own website? That this just got a whole lot more problematic. As of October, the decision space of what to do here just got a lot harder. So let's talk about exactly what the questions you need to ask are and what criteria you would use to select which of these two chains uh, you should actually use. The good news is that all major browsers don't care. Chrome, Edge, Firefox, Opera, Safari, mobile versions of all of the above, a bajillion other browsers, they don't care which of these chains your website serves. They will, they, they trust both of these certificates by default, uh, both DST root CAX3 and ISRG root X1. And whichever chain your website provides, if they happen to not trust that chain for some reason, they will happily figure out that the other chain exists and trust will still work just fine. So the good news is that in the vast majority of cases, no one has to care. The second piece of good news is that this has happened before. In May of last year, May 2020, uh, the Ad Trust external CA root expired. Uh, this was a widely trusted certificate operated by Sectigo, and uh, it expired in exactly the same way as DST root CAX3 is going to expire. And the solution was basically the same thing as we're doing here. Have uh, a different intermediate that is also a nearly as widely trusted root and let the chain go up to that intermediate. So that would be ISRG root X1 in this case. But there are, well, I guess the last piece of good news is that there's really only two main categories of clients that you need to think about. Android less than 6.0 and OpenSSL less than 1.0.2. So 
one piece of good news here is if you can just get clients to update, uh, if you can get your users to use versions of Android greater than version 6.0, if you can get your clients to update the version of OpenSSL they're using to 1.1 dot something, then this problem just goes away. Um, so get your clients to update. <laughs> But we'll assume you can't and go through these two categories of clients and what criteria you need to think about when selecting which chain to use. So Android, problem number one, Android versions 6.0 and prior do not trust ISRG root X1. They don't have it in their trust store. Later versions of Android do have ISRG root X1 in their trust store, but early versions don't. Um, and unfortunately, they can't update their trust store to include it. So if you're on an old version of Android, you're pretty much stuck not trusting ISRG root X1. But Android doesn't care about trust anchor expiration. So even after the DST root CAX3 certificate expires, Android versions less than 6.0 don't care. They will continue to trust that trust anchor in their trust store because their trust store says, I trust it. Uh, it the rest of the contents of the certificate representing DST root CAX3 don't matter to Android. So these two facts combine, just use the default chain use the long default chain that goes up through ISRG root X1 all the way up to DST root CAX3. If a bunch of your clients are on Android versions less than 6.0 or 6.0 or earlier, just use the default chain. Uh, it'll make all modern clients happy. It'll make old Android clients happy. And then you'll be good to go. So Android, fairly simple. Let's talk about OpenSSL. Unlike Android, OpenSSL in all versions does care about trust anchor expiration. If you say to OpenSSL, I trust this certificate, then and that certificate has expired, then OpenSSL will say, no, 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 no. You don't actually trust that certificate anymore. So OpenSSL does care about trust anchor expiration. And OpenSSL doesn't build alternate paths. You can imagine a world where uh, you hand OpenSSL this chain of certificates and say, hey, OpenSSL, please verify that I trust this for me. And you would say, oh, well, here's the LEAF certificate. It says, uh, well, Here's another certificate. It, it says I'm trusted by R3. Oh, well, here's an R3 certificate. It says I'm trusted by ISRG root X1. Uh, that says I'm trusted by DST root CAX3. Oh, no, I don't trust DST root CAX3 anymore. It's expired. Let's go try something else. Oh, look, I have a different version of ISRG root X1 in my trust store as well and it's not expired. Great, sorry that first chain didn't work out, uh, but this alternate one did, and that's awesome. OpenSSL doesn't really do that. Uh, OpenSSL just takes whatever chain you have and says, do I trust this? Unless there are two ways to get OpenSSL to actually look at alternate chains. One of those is to set the trusted first flag. Trusted first basically tells OpenSSL, anytime you encounter a certificate, check to see if you've been told that you trust it. If you do, stop there. If you don't, then try to look at the next certificate up in the chain. So trusted first means first, check to see if each certificate is directly trusted. So if the trusted first flag is set, it starts with the LEAF certificate, says this is trusted by R3, but I don't trust R3, let's continue going up the chain. Oh, that says it's trusted by ISRG root X1. Interesting, 
I do trust ISRT root X1. Fantastic. And it stops there and it doesn't care that DST root CAX3 is expired. The second way to get OpenSSL to build alternate paths is to remove the root from your trust store entirely. If OpenSSL finds DST root CAX3 in your trust store, and sees that it's expired, it'll say, whoa, 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 this is expired. That's a bad thing. If, however, it sees ISRG root X1 saying, I'm trusted by DST root CAX3, and then it looks for DST root CAX3 and can't find it anywhere, it says, oh, that's weird. Guess I'll ignore that. Let's try something else. Oh, hey, I found ISRG root X1, and I trust that. So there's basically two ways to get OpenSSL to actually build an alternate path. And that's to set the trusted first flag or to remove DST root CAX3 from the trust store entirely. So with all of this combined, if you are running a web service that uses Let's Encrypt certificates and a bunch of your clients are running OpenSSL directly as opposed to browsers or something else. Basically, your four options for mitigating the DST root CAX3 expiration are, one, use the alternate chain. If the chain you serve ends at ISRG root X1 and your OpenSSL clients trust ISRG root X1, you're golden. But you might not want to do that if you also have Android clients, for example. So if that's not possible for you, update your clients. OpenSSL 1.1 and greater uses the trusted first flag by default. So if you can get your clients to upgrade to OpenSSL 1.1.x, then that will work. Third, you could have your clients set the trusted first flag. This is a little hard, uh, depending on the version of OpenSSL, sometimes it's a runtime flag, sometimes it's a compile time flag. Some versions of OpenSSL don't have this flag at all, but those versions are very old and should definitely be updated. So try to do this if possible. Or finally, just get your clients to remove DST root CAX3 from their trust stores entirely. If DST root CAX3 is not in their trust store, but ISRG root X1 is, then they will build an appropriate path. So I know that was a lot. Uh, the, uh, the situation is definitely complex. The solutions are also complex, uh, but hopefully this presentation and the recording of this presentation that you can go back and watch over and over and over again are helpful. Also, I have a bunch of references here. I'll make sure to leave this slide up for a little bit so that you can get all of these URLs. Also, obviously, these will all be in the recording. And maybe I'll even work with the wonderful Janessa to uh, publish these slides directly so that you can go click these links. Uh, but these are a fantastic set of resources and references that uh, contain all of the information that I just talked through and a whole bunch of extra detail. The last one in particular, uh, this one, Fixing the Breakage from Ad Trust, is a particularly wonderful resource. It's about what happened when the Ad Trust external CA route expired in May of last year and what people had to do to work around that. Um, so at this point, I'm happy to take questions. Uh, I see there are some comments over in chat. I don't think I've seen any questions go by yet, but if you have any, uh, toss them in there and I will be happy to address them. Yeah, I thought something that was really interesting too. Um, if the OpenSSL team is here, I did invite them. Um, thank you again for that great write-up earlier this week. That was a huge relief um, to all of us as well. 
Um, some things that I didn't know were, you know, that the trusted first flag works differently within different versions. Um, just, a, I think a version difference too, like one version difference. Um, so be sure to check out that blog post, um, for the workarounds that OpenSSL has. Um, it's super informative and pretty short. I was actually like for as complex of an issue this is, the workarounds for OpenSSL are actually pretty great. Um, <laughs> so, and that is also in the chat. I think most of these are in the chat already. Um, thanks to Griffin also for um, putting a lot of those certificates in the chat too. It's so cool. Um, CT logs are a whole nother conversation, but I, you know, the, um, being able to see our own certificates and CT logs is really awesome. Um, all right. It looks like we have a question here from Nick Lamb. I'd like to know how thoroughly other things were checked, the Windows SSL TLS libraries, those from Apple, not in browsers for other apps. Um, Windows and Apple are quite straightforward. Uh, the uh, Apple Trust Store is the same across uh, modern versions of Mac OS and iOS and other Apple products. And that trust store is not just, for example, used by Safari, but it is the system trust store. And any application that integrates with the system trust store will trust the same set of things. Uh, similarly, on Windows, the Windows trust store is not just the Edge trust store, but it's the Windows trust store. Uh, any program on Windows that integrates with the operating system level trust store, which I think is basically all of them because Windows actually offers some interesting uh, like operating system syscalls to interact with the trust store directly. Like if, if you're a Windows application, you don't look at the Windows trust store and say, hmm, does this certificate validate? You make a syscall that says, hey, Windows, please validate this for me. And so the Windows Trust Store works across basically all Windows applications. There are a couple exceptions that I did not talk about in this presentation. Um, programs like MUT, uh, the like email client, uh, do their own certificate validation sometimes and use old outdated libraries that you have very little control over. GNU TLS, uh, which is very similar to OpenSSL in many ways. Uh, GNU TLS uh, has fixed this problem in certain versions, but off the top of my head, I don't have a good map of which versions do appropriate alternate chain building and how widely spread those versions are. But that information is available. I just didn't cover it in this presentation because time limits and keeping the information to the most widely relevant things. Um, other questions and comments in here. Yeah. Uh, oh, so there's some comments here. NPM uses their own trust store. Uh, yeah, Java has a trust store that it uh, ships sometimes. Uh, Firefox on Windows, of course, uses the Mozilla root store, not the Windows trust store. Yeah, there, there are some exceptions. Use newest OpenSSL, use newest GNU TLS. Yes, that advice is sufficient. If your clients can upgrade to versions of OpenSSL and GNU TLS that are less than a year old, that were released since the ad trust expiration in May of last year, uh, those versions do have appropriate alternate chain building. Yeah, and we also on our website, um, our website is also open source. Um, again, Let's Encrypt is big on open source. Um, anybody can put a PR in. If you know of known incompat incompatibilities with um, different certificates on our certificate chain, Please make a PR. Um, I did also link that that website in the chat as well. So we are constantly updating that, um, making sure that that has the latest information as well. Um, we've also been working with a few other partners, um, some large integrators, some Let's Encrypt large integrators, um, who have been also, um, you know, shipping their applications, trying to figure out what 
um, what works and what doesn't. So we have been working with other folks on this as well. Um, but again, if you have any of those that aren't on our, our certificate compatibility website, um, let us know, do a PR for it in the GitHub repo. Um, yeah, I haven't seen other questions pop up, pardon me, pop up in the comments over here yet. Uh, give it another moment or two, or let me know if I missed a question that scrolled by. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for coming. I hope that this presentation slash recording is, is helpful to folks. And um, yeah, it's been a pleasure being here. Hey, Aaron, one last question for you. What is one piece of advice or one thing that you want to leave with everyone as this expiration looms in 12 days, 13 days? <laughs> What's the one thing you want to leave people with? I'm putting them on the spot. We didn't practice this. <laughs> oh, goodness. Why would you do this to me? Um, I mean, I'm sorely tempted to make the don't panic, carry a towel joke. Um, I think uh, also trying to get I think I think I think the big comment is We've been trying to make a lot of noise about this upcoming expiration because it is a slightly scary event. And we saw how widespread the impact from the ad trust expiration was last year. Uh, and so fundamentally, yeah, it's, it's a slightly scary event, but we've been making a lot of noise. We've been putting all of this information out there. We've taken the time to make sure that we have these uh, appropriate chains and alternate chains out there. And so in theory, September 30th comes and goes with basically no impact because everyone who is seriously impacted has already seen the info that we've been putting out there and has uh, made the necessary changes and adjustments and alterations to their chains and to their clients. Um, and if this motivates a lot of people to update their OpenSSL and their GNU TLS to modern versions, all the better. <laughs> so uh, yeah, hopefully this is sort of a, a non-event because we've done our due diligence. Yeah, for sure. And again, our community has been amazing from, you know, helping us think of solutions um, to break less things um, to getting the word out about this expiration um, to our community moderators and folks that are constantly asking questions or answering questions on our community forums. Thank you all so much. This is Let's Encrypt itself is a huge community that is just mind blowing. Um, that is incredible. And we just can't thank you all enough for your help. Um, that being said, our community forum is the best place to get help um, for this expiration. So if you do have further questions, um, we do have a thread on the community forum. Um, it's just community.letsencrypt.org and come ask questions. We're here for you. Our community is here for you. It may be scary, but we're all in this together. Um, and again, yeah, we're really hoping for a great non-event <laughs> with this expiration. So um, yes, thank you everyone for taking the time today to join us. Uh, we hope this was informative. If you wanna see more stuff like this, let us know. And we will be on the community forum and we will chat with you soon. Thanks. <laughs>